Yes, and you've been working so hard for it to get to that point as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a that's a thing that I've been trying to consciously tell myself too. It's like, you like no bitch, you you have worked very hard to get to the place to be able to make those decisions. Now, other people might not recognize that. Even the people that are closest to you by in image, you know, yeah. wise, might not realize it. But if you're realizing it and you can make moves based on that. And that's what the memoir's for. That's what, hello. The that's book. what the memoir's for. The book, if, the book, the book. You know, when you want to know the story about Julie J and Bad Bussy, you'll read it, you'll tune in, because yes. it'll be memoir, biopic, documentary. Oh, yeah. It'll be the whole <laughs> fucking rollout. And it'll be an incredible story because yes. real shit, we're fucking... And I'm not even saying this now because we're recording, but like, because like we're really incredible people, girl, you know? Oh my gosh. With yeah. <laughs> like incredible intention. Yeah. And I think what's like amazing about the part of life where we're at right now is that it's like, I also, I lost my voice last week oh, that's okay. at Paramore. So if uh, you, you hear me, oh. I'm either getting choked up or I'm fighting a coughing fit. That's okay. But, um, I just think that, like, genuinely, like, everything we're doing now, we're not worried about it because we know the intention behind it is right. Yes. Even if shit going on right now isn't fucking easy. Yes. And I, you know what's interesting to me? I, you know, I've kind of been in this strange place with drag and nightlife mm -hmm. over the past, I would say, like, one to two weeks where I've just realized that... I, I'm not, I, I can't play the social game anymore. I can't do the politics game anymore. Yeah. I can't do the, um, uh, really what it is is re respectability politics. If we like really get down into it. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've also realized that like, girl, everybody, every, every other queen, every other person in nightlife is w walking around chin high. I am the shit. And, you know, the bar might be on the ground, it might be below the ground, but yeah. to them, they're still the shit. And for so long, I was telling myself, oh no, I have to minimize. I have to make myself smaller. I have to allow this person to take up space, this person to take up space, to, to, to turn the volume down just a little bit. But within, within the past couple of weeks, I've just realized, I'm like, no girl, mm -mm. What's, what's the point in that? That is that is a waste of energy. That's a waste of time. If I know that I'm contributing something, if I know that I am in this for the right reasons, for the right intentions, like you say, mm -hmm. then there's no reason for me not to take up space. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 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 It's like, and I'm, and I'm the same way too. I think, and I've just been like diving into that recently. I think, especially for us as queer people, especially queer people of color, it's like we've been used to being told minimize oh turn it down turn it down turn Ooh. it down even now like now we're out and about we're frolicking we're happy it's pride month still i don't know where is it you know still my parents voices is it still my own it's it's still ruminating from somewhere yes that's like no matter what you do even if somebody's like oh i love your show i'm like oh my little thing thanks no not my little no thank you thank my you. show is fucking fierce yes. 50 episodes <laughs> in and it's me doing every single thing you know granted if it wasn't a show of quality and it and it was a show that was done out of vainness and just negativity, then that would, that would be whack if I were to be owning it because I'd be owning something that's whack. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that like, I feel like you and I have good taste. We do. I think we have good taste. In a lot of things. Absolutely. In a lot of things. And so we're not, I, I'm, I'm never that type of person that is gonna go to a show and half-ass it and if i do half-ass it even my 50 percent is better than some people's exactly 50%. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's it's and and there's a difference right because it's not cockiness per se no. that's not what we're talking about what we're talking about is like knowing who you are what you're capable of what you bring to the table yeah. and and owning that and claiming it and saying you know what yeah i i did do that thing and i am like n notable and I am doing this and doing it. Uh, you know what? All things considered, we doing it well. <laughs> Down. And somehow our skin is still. 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 Okay. Still. <laughs> I had a rough patch a few weeks ago, Listen, but we still. Ooh, we. You and me both, but we're here. But still, but you know, still. and that's the thing. And I realize, I think like what cockiness is on a whole other level, like cockiness, I think is like making up for what you aren't. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what cockiness is. And that's why it's not high. Because it's like, it's just overcompensating out the ass. Like, it's just nothing. Yes. Whereas what we are is being proud of what we are. Yeah. We're owning it. We're being proud of our work. And I'll never forget when I turned, I think it was when I turned 25, is like when it started to begin Mm -hmm. of me realizing like, oh, you're the thing getting in your way, girl. Yes. It's, you know, even in those little moments, like if somebody gives you a compliment, like nice shirt, like, oh, girl, I got this from Goodwill. Like little ways to dig yourself or like take little miniature, like simple blessings away from you. Yeah. That's what's going to hold you back, girl. Like that stuff builds up and I realized it. And the word that I just kept on associating with it, I was like, that's so contradictory Mm -hmm. because then I'm going to go to bed every night wanting this job, wanting this agency, wanting this, wanting this and that and that. None of that could happen if I can't even accept a compliment from somebody that loves me or somebody that doesn't even know me or or just finding ways to continuously minimize myself. Yet nobody in the room has said anything yet. And if anything, they've just sung my fucking praises. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll sing your praises every day. Thanks, babes. And you do, too. (laughs) Trust the mayor of Brooklyn Drag. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh yes i saw the your the i listened to it with you and marie so sweet I oh my god love that's marie my sister down i was just i think i was just texting her a couple hours ago i adore her she's the best i adore her and i adore you and i want to know because you've been you were one of my first guests on my show which really? i was thinking about today in oh the my shower gosh. i didn't even I, I for some reason in my mind you've just been doing this forever Cause in in Hi. my mind I'm like it, I'm like Joey don't speak. I'm not Aww. worried. You got it all together, love. Thanks, babe. Truly, Thank with this you. show too. I mean, you've since even since I've been here, I feel like the show has just grown exponentially. You've had Kevin Aviance here. Yeah. Like that one. That one was the one I saw, and I was like, I was like, oh my girl is. She don't need. She don't need me. She don't need the rest mm, of us. She. I need and want you. <laughs> down. You. Yeah, that was. That was a whole other like yeah thing. I'm I'll be with Kevin um on Sunday actually at La Mama. We're doing a show together. I love um, Kevin. And what we're I we're pretty much gonna be doing what we're doing right now, just like in conversation with each Gorge. other. Gorge. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'll have to go. That. Yeah, it's like sl- sliding scale tickets. I think it's like ten dollars is the lowest one. Gorgeous. Yeah. So from last time you were here, I believe it was like June, July, something of that. Yes. That's like around when I was in like the first few episodes that I was filming for my show. Yes. If you can, since we're talking about growth and everything, I want you to think about it. Like where's Juliet now versus we're approaching a year almost Mm. close. Like it's June now. Yeah. Where's Julie now versus Julie then? Because you're also my first reoccurring guest, mind you. I know, which I'm also, I'm also like, Oh gosh. I'm like thinking about what I talked about last time. And it's, it kind of feels like greatness. Greatness. (laughs) Just like a fever dream. Um, what has changed? My goodness. <laughs> um, you know, I I think that over the past year, I have really tried and, and and made it a point in my life to take bigger strides. And I think that for a long time, I was taking small steps to get to where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, you know what? I want to produce my own show. You know what? I want to do something large scale and see what happens. And if it fails, it fails and that's okay. Yeah. And you know, I I think that in some ways, you know, with with the good comes the bad. You know, there's right. there's always going to be good days, but there's going to be bad days too. And I think that you know, nightlife is one of those spaces where things happen very fast. Everything is changing. Bars open, bars close, parties start, parties stop. Uh, People, you know, there's, I say every single day, like 30 new nightlife performers are born. Yeah. And it's really true. So you're, you're, I'm always thinking to myself about how am I reinventing myself? What am I doing as an artist to, to show the rest of the world that they should take me seriously at what I do and that I'm good at what I do as well? Yeah. Um, but I've also, I've also kind of come to realize recently that I don't have to be as hard on myself as I have been over the past year. Mm -hmm. And this is, I'm going into now like one, two, three, 
I would say like three years like in New York City nightlife, like like intensely in it, yeah. working deeply in it and relying on it. Like it's my sole income yep. now. Now, will it be that forever? I don't know. And I've been thinking about that a lot recently. Mm hmm. You know, because there's this 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 clip of Jill Scott in an interview, and she was saying, you know, to be a good artist, you have to live life. Yeah. You have to cook dinner for yourself. You have to burn the dinner. You have to order takeout. You have to talk to your friends. You have to fall in love. You have to be cheated on. Yeah. You have to ch maybe cheat on somebody else. You know, like you, there's so certain things Real. that you have to do. And over the past year, my foot has been on the gas, like nonstop. You know, and I haven't really, I don't think, had a chance to sit down and say, all right, so we did all of those things. We, we had that list, right? We did all of those things. Mm -hmm. Now what? And I don't mean to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a huge Beyonce fan, huge Beyonce fan. And I kind of feel like Beyonce, when she, like, dropped her dad as her manager right now, Yep. <laughs> I love you see what, that like, metaphor. That, I feel like that right now. And so I'm looking to the horizon and it's and it's scary. Yeah. Because it's it's kind of gray. And you know, I've I've let go of some shows, you know, because I really wanted to start moving into a place where not only did I have more input and say but also because it, it's kind of growing pains it's growing pains and not only for me but i think that it's growing pains for a lot of other people as well mm. and you know everything that i do in my career and in the choices that i make i do with the intention of love i lead with love and everything that i do always and you know, some people don't get that. So yeah. for some people, that's a foreign concept. That's a foreign concept. And even like, even when I'm talking to somebody and I'm like, my love, what the fuck is going on with you? You need to get yourself together. That's not me coming from a place of being like, I don't like you. I don't want what's best for you. Babe, I want everybody to win. I'm going to say that. I, I, I'm looking at all the cameras right now. I want everybody to win. Yes. I want everybody to win. I don't want anybody to lose. What 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 does it look like for us as a community to wish for somebody's downfall? Girl, fuck that shit. Who cares? Exactly. Because if the community falls in, guess what? So do you so and do I. You. So do Because we're in the, you know what I we're mean? We're in it together. Exactly. We're in it together. And the thing is, is that, and two, I've reached a point now where I have realized that power is something that will always have the potential to be abused. Always. Mm. It always will. And any power that I have or that I acquire is going to be used for making sure that everybody feels like there is some sense of community. Because as quiet as it's kept, you know, it, we're, in nightlife, people can be very separated. Yeah. You can be very separated. Like it, there's, there's social circles, there's cliques, there's all of these things. And, you know, try as you may, as we may, to kind of uh, float above those things. Every once in a while, we'll fall into it. Happens. It. it happens. Um, but over the past year, what I've realized is that, like, I, I'm in this because I love the art of drag. Anything beyond that, to me, I'm like, <sighs> can we come up with something else? You know, it's like, literally, it's like can we come up? Do y'all need another else? hobby? Like, is you know. Is, is that what it is? Yeah. Because to me, I'm always wanting to get back to the root of it. Mm -hmm. And much like, much like Beyonce coming off of I Am Sasha Fierce, right? I feel like this past year has been my commercial year of, of in, in nightlife. You yeah. know, it's like I've done all of the, I've like checked the boxes mm -hmm. and I've been nominated for the awards. I've lost the awards. I've, I have won a competition. I have lost competitions. I've done a drag race viewing at the biggest venue in Brooklyn. I've done a drag race viewing at the smallest venue in Brooklyn. You know, I've produced a show. I've produced a charity show. It, it just, all of these things I have to look back and say, wow. Yeah. You know, we pat yourself on the back, bitch. Exactly. You're doing something. Exactly. You're doing something. And and all of those things have, have all been from a place of love for the art form of drag. 
Mm-hmm. Sorry, that was a very long answer. No, I was just to like the past year. <laughs> You're like, I wish you were my math teacher because oh I would have passed. What's so funny I is I was been... awful at math in school. See, but like with you, genuinely, anything it you say, <laughs> not only am I hearing you, but I'm actually actively listening. Thank you. Trust me. But <laughs> I agree 100%. And going off that point, like when you take, when you finally have that moment to take a look back at all the work you've done in your quote unquote commercial era, you get to like have a moment to actually celebrate yourself. But I realized too, because in a way, like I feel like, you know, my departure from the Breakfast Club era, like, blah, 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 like, that was my commercial era. Yes. And you have to have those moments that are the moments you dreamed of. And, you you know, you achieve them and they're amazing. But you look back on them and you say, okay, what, what moments of these or which moments of these ones that I experienced and that I earned are worth it still? Mm-hmm. And which ones mean something to me now? Yeah. And which ones might still mean something to me next year Mm -hmm. because sometimes a lot of those achievements we get are one and done and that's hot yeah and we love it in the moment you get it you get the award you know i got you know this free backstage pass to whatever concert i twerk it was amazing for that time in that place yes but then maybe at some point later no no i'd rather sit at home with my best friend or go use that weekend to go see my family Mm -hmm. this booking that you've dreamed of you've gotten it before do you want to take it again or do you just want a night in do you want to go on a trip? What means more to you now at this moment? Yes. Did, did I phrase that correctly? Oh my gosh. Perfectly. You know what I mean? It's Perfectly. like, it's like, am I going to go through the, the mental strain of doing something that, you know, I, it's, it's one of those things too. And I think with, with being an artist and with, with doing shows, it's like, you know, I want I want the audience to be entertained, but I know that the audience is not going to be entertained if I'm in a mental place because I'm in an environment where I'm being caught mental. I have mental strain Mm. being in this environment, right? It's like, which one do I push up more? Right. Is it, do I put the audience higher or do I put my own like mental health and, and emotional well being above those things? Yeah. And, you know what? what the, the beautiful thing about drag is that it's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere now. Everywhere. We've re, we've reached a point now, and I don't think that it will ever be mainstream. And I think that our the the current news cycle, I'll right. say that we're in right now, proves that drag will never be something that's mainstream, right? Because it's not something that everybody quite gets. Which and when I say it's not something that people get, it's that we have a population of people in this world who do not understand uh, freedom, exactly, and being yourself and uh, living your truth. You know, which when we say those things, it's like, oh my gosh, that sounds very elementary and rudi- ru- rudimentary as exactly. well, like very base level. Exactly. But for a lot of the country, that's not the case. Exactly. And drag is, dra- dra- but still, drag is everywhere, and it will continue to be everywhere for as as long as time goes on. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things that I I've realized that like I my power can be used in places where I am not experiencing mental strain, where I'm being paid for what I'm worth, where my contribution to anything that I'm doing is seen, mm-hmm. it's recognized. And it's not, and it comes from a place of love. Yeah. You know, no one person is, no, not one other person in nightlife is greater than the other. As much as, you know, awards, accolades, positions will lead you to believe, you know, the, the only, like, w- there's no head bitch in charge. There's no CEO of nightlife. It's just a bio. Girl, it's, it's just something to fill up a bio. Yeah, with. it's something it's to fill up a bio with. I mean, and we, of course we say that to ourselves. Like I say to myself, like, you know, it's like Julie J presents Stand Up NYC. I but whenever I, you can ask the poster designers that I've had, I'm like, girl, make my name small as fuck because it really like I'm like, I I just want people to know that I'm the point person for it. Right. Right. If they have a question about it, Hit they can up. come to me. Hit Not me like it's Julie J presents. No, yeah, exactly. I actually don't care. They could take my name off the poster, but then of course that gets into like, well, who is in Who do we right. go to? Right. You know? We still want to be business women here. Yeah. We exactly. still want to be business women. Of course, absolutely. Um, 
but I feel like I'm in my my independent era. I love it. <laughs> now. So I, I have my it. commercial era and now I'm like in my independent artist era, which I is love it. you know, scary. It's terrifying. It's scary and terrifying, but it's gonna like it's already been great for you, but like genuinely I know like it's the beginning of like your life now with your art because sometimes our art could become so crucial to our lives where it becomes abusive. Absolutely. Whether it's the situations we put ourselves in, the rooms we put ourselves in, the people we put ourselves in front of, the way we're operating our say, ourselves day to day to get ourselves to the thing that is our art. Yeah. Sometimes that could be the thing that literally just slowly eats us up and kills us. Yes. But now. And I've seen it. Oh my gosh, I've seen it in nightlife happen so much. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen so much. And it's almost one of these things now. I'll talk to somebody else and I'm like, girl, I can't believe we have to deal with this. And somebody else will say, yeah, that's just how it is. But it doesn't have to be. Exactly. It doesn't have to be the way that it is. No. And the thing is, too, and I was I was talking to this to, uh, to Marie about this mm -hmm. recently because I I find that what happens is for those of us who are more vocal about certain things mm -hmm. in nightlife. And really what it is is us being vocal about, can we all get paid the same? Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Can we can we all like just get along? Oh <gasps> can we not change in the kitchen? Can we is it would be great to not change in the kitchen. Oh my gosh. And people are like, well girl, that's just how that's just how it is. But it's not how it has to be, y'all. Exactly. And the thing is, is, and what frustrates me now is that I feel like so many of people who have been in nightlife for so long have not have not reached that point to say to themselves, this is not how it has to be. And mind you, does that take work to change? Yes, I've done it. Many, many of us have mm -hmm. done it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things now where I'm like, well, y'all, if we're not if we're not on the same program, then that's the old program. Exactly. I'm not interested in the old exactly. program. I'm interested in what's new, what's Definitely. moving us forward. I don't want archaic. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I feel like every community, facet of life, job, career, industry, etc., has this problem. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be, and it's not even an age thing. It's just sometimes it's the people that are up there, whether it be in experience, in age, or whatever are the ones to be like, mm, it's the way things have always been. Thanks for the fact. Yeah. I don't need that to be a fact a year from now, however. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And I think that what a lot of people don't Ugh. realize is that drag drag performers, people in nightlife, we, we really don't make that much money. Mm -hmm. We don't, at least on a local scale, on a local scale. And I was joking with Marie because, you know, we – I feel like we've been doing a lot of these really like high profile events for, for example, I'm not sure when this episode will come out, but I have an interview um, with MSNBC on Thursday. Fucking stunning. Amazing. For, for one of their shows on the network and the amount of money in my bank account right now does not match somebody who would be doing an interview on MSNBC. Right. Right. But we still show up like this as if you know we are <laughs> as if i just got i look like i just stepped out of a car girl i took the train here i took the train felt, to get here felt <laughs> you know what i'm saying felt. yes it's like we we show up to these places we we are you know immense talents immense entertainers and individuals and i was just telling somebody the other day one of the biggest gigs that i one of the biggest weekly gigs that I ever had only paid me a hundred dollars a week, a mm. hundred dollars. And it's like, if I were to take a car, so now it's I'm walking away with out of... 50. If it's, yeah. if it's peak time, then I'm walking out with 25. Hopefully the audience is good and I make tips and I recoup that to then get back to the hundred breaking even. Yeah. You know? Mm. So it's and am I grateful for every dollar? Absolutely. Yeah. That goes without saying. I'm always appreciative for anything that I get. Mm -hmm. And I work hard for anything that I that I have gotten up to this point. But with with the like independence now, 
or the, this this kind of like desire to be more independent in things that I'm doing and the choices that I'm making, it's also realizing that like it may be a long time before I get to the point where I am financially comfortable in my life. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I mean, good Joe Biden, uh, he ain't doing nothing for these student loans, right. girl. Hello. They, it's impending. It's impending. And they right. coming. They coming for our ass. Down. And I ain't got the money to pay him. Nope. <laughs> I don't. Nope. And so when, you know, as time goes on, I'm I'm hopeful that these things will happen. Um, But, it, you know, none of this is guaranteed. Yeah. It is going to happen, though. Yes. It's going to happen for me. both of us. It will for both of us. <laughs> But and I realize this, and I realize that this this year, it's gonna come. It's just going to take fucking longer. It might not, yes. which is fierce. But if it does take longer, it's because it's been done with more quality, yes. and it's been done with integrity. We could do a lot of things that could get us where we want to financially to be there to get us where we want to be financially by tomorrow. Yes. But will we wake up the following day being like, "What's fierce, me or the money I just made?" Oh. <sighs> Because the thing is, I absolutely could do things and and do shows where, you know, I am just like cranking out material all the time and not may, maybe not even cranking out right. the same material. Maybe just like do I, I, I just can't be stagnant anymore ever, ever. And I feel like f over the past year that, ever, you know, since the last time that I was sitting in this chair. I feel like, you know, I've I've been able and I've been blessed to accomplish so much. Mm. And I I always hate to be the person that's like what's next, what's next, what's next. What's next for me is what's now. What's now? Yep. And focusing on what's now. Yeah. There was a moment that I woke up the other day and I was like maybe like a week or two ago and I was like I feel like I've just been doing the same thing for months now and you know of course there's been blips in time where i've been able to kind of push out of that like project one mm -hmm. like stand up new york um like some other shows but it also it's one of those things where i'm like it's not i want quality over quantity yeah that's what i want and sometimes that quality versus quantity that quality versus quantity is something only you could feel. Yes. They might look the same to everybody else, yes. which is fierce. Yeah, hey, love it. <laughs> but it's, it's, babes, it's not you, it's me. It's me. It's that kind of thing. It absolutely is me. I'm with you a million percent. I want to ask you please, to chat about stand-up just because yes. this episode has to be a mini one because I have clients to do. Yes, that's okay. We're going to make it a mini Which one. is hot because then that means we have a part three with yes. Julie J. <laughs> But Please. I do because I'm gonna try to literally put this out the week of stand up, whether that be this week or I think next week. What are we on right now? June. Stand up is Saturday. Saturday, yes. Gorgeous. So, more so than it's a week either gonna away. be out this Friday or next Friday. Love. Whichever. Always it's gonna be right out before. Yeah. So I want you to let everybody know what stand up NYC is. Yes. It was the event of the year, by the way. Oh the my first gosh. installment. Thank you I'm so, so much. Serious when I say that. And <laughs> I need to you, tell baby. you that every time I see you. Thank you. What what is stand up NYC? What's what that? are we fighting for? How can we get there? Absolutely. Yes. Well, to in 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 brief, um, stand up New York is a nightlife benefit show uh, that I put together with my my best friend and roommate Aaron Hawk, and you know I I woke up one morning and it's back in March, and I just I just got to a point where I was like, you know what? No, none of the people that we have deemed to be leaders in nightlife, none of the people who we have, you know, put on a pedestal, given crowns to, are speaking up or doing enough right now. Now, mind you, we all have different capacities to do different things. But at base level, I was like, you know what, if nobody else is going to do something, then I'm going to get my black ass up and I'm going to do something. And, you know, it... It was one of those things where I was like, I don't know how many people will get involved with this. You know, I'll put out a call and we'll see what happens, you know, hoping that maybe 20, 25 people will say, yeah, girl, we'll we'll show up. We'll perform. Uh -huh. And I and I promise you that that was my mindset. It really of course. It was not. I 
did not think to myself at all that hundred baby you know that we were gonna raise so much money and that we were gonna have so many people um and so the next stand up is on June 17th it's a a day party into a night party so it starts at 4 p.m Beautiful. it ends at 4 a.m uh it's it's gonna be a long day but we have over what is it now like 55 performers we have over 70 hosts um we're being sponsored by minty makeup uh, or junior, junior mint, mint. Ah. junior mint minty makeup um who else i just got off the phone today with uh community vodka who's also going to be a sponsor Gorgeous. um and see the queens is also going to be a sponsor Gorgeous. so we have things things are in motion things are happening um, but we are, we're supporting three different organizations, one being black trans Fems in the arts, mm-hmm. uh, which is based here in New York city, yep. uh, which helps black trans folks get the resources that they need to make the art that they want, you know? And one of the, the biggest things in my mind, this, this go round was finding an organization that is helping trans people thrive. Yeah. Okay. Cause I know that we've been talking a lot about protection, you know, what's, what's after protection. How can we make sure that, um, we as trans people are able to thrive yep. in this world, okay? Um, the second one is the Trans Legal Defense and Education Fund, which is helping f- uh, trans folks in all, uh, not all states, but um, in a, I, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get this number wrong, but l- several states here in the United States get name changes, mm-hmm. um, get them connected to any legal services that they might need as well. Um, and then the third organization is the um, is Southern Equality's Trans Youth Emergency Project Fund. I, I believe that I said all of that. Um, but it is connecting folks in those states in the South um, whose legislation has has really just cut off access to health care for trans folks mm-hmm. and making sure that they have the money, the resources that they need to travel out of state if they need to to get that care. Um, so yeah, those are the the three organizations, and you know we try to be as intentional as possible with picking these organizations yeah. and making sure that we're covering as much ground as we possibly can. So yeah, that's uh, everything in short. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. It's gonna be so good. We have uh, Drag Race's Brita Filter is gonna be there Love. performing. Madeline Hatter is gonna be there from Dragula, uh, Milk as well from Drag Race, and Drag Out the Boat is gonna be a part of it. You know, listen, I I'm one of those people. I'm like. As many people as we can get involved, the better. And hopefully it's it's the the second event of the year. <laughs> There's going to be plenty of people I would there. love. Trust me. Yes. If the turnout was insane during the first one, it was, the first one was yes. March? The first one was in March. March we still had coat check. Yes. We're not going to see a lot of coats here. So no. the turnout is going to be even more major. I hope you know that. Thank you, love. I hope so. And you're of course, like, you know, this is about, like we're saying, this is about protecting the community. This is for everyone else. But like... You do also put a lot of work in, sis. Oh, thank you. Love. And all the love you're getting back and all the success you're getting back with these things that you put your heart and your intention truly into, like, you do deserve. Thank you, baby. You know? so much. Like, it's okay to be like, that thing I did for the community is fierce, but I also did that. Thank you, love. You, you know? know, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I'll never be the person that, like, it's like. I know. Yes, I did that. I did I'm it. I'm the and same I, way. You know, we're, we're, we're just those type of people. And, you know, I... Any, anything that I do with stand up, you know, I don't get paid to do any of mm. that, and I don't take any money for myself. Yeah. Aaron and I both, you know, we're, we we do this, and 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 I repeat this to so many people who who do tell me, you know, like I'm so thankful for this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. It's the least that I could do. Yeah. And I'm a drag queen with six thousand followers on Instagram, and it's the least that I could do. Mm imagine what the rest of us as a community could do if we took a second and said hmm this is something bigger than me yeah and i need to invest for one day in something that might be a little bit bigger than me exactly i think that we could change a lot of things in our city and in our world so i encourage that i urge that beautiful Thank you, baby. I love you. I love you so much. So much. Seeing you made my day. Like oh my today gosh. was like a little shifted and tilted, but like no, that's okay. like straightened it out. Beautiful. Everything is back on track. Yes. I love you so much. We'll plan for another part through where like we could really like yes. dive into shit because like 
your growth this past year has just been like incredible obviously on a career end but like personally i know things are turning yeah and i'm so happy for you and i'm so excited to see it mm-hmm. genuinely just please Thank you. take care of yourself yes i'm gonna like, do my best <laughs> like as if you're your little your own child like yes if she's hungry feed her if she's tired rest take a second yeah collect yourself yeah mm-hmm. everyone deserves it but you especially you do thank you trust I appreciate you. I love you so much. You know you you. got me back anytime. Please. I love you so much, babes. Y'all know where to find Julie and find me. We'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. I love you so much. 